Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. One of the questions I get asked more than almost any other on this channel is how big a fill in the blank, tiller, bush hog, brush hog, square baler, disc mower, sickle mower can I pull with my tractor? And it could be any number of implements. And today I'm going to talk about uh, two recent questions that I had on this subject. And at the end, I'll tell you how I answered them. And then I'm going to talk about 10 things. I don't have any guarantee that the implement you buy is going to be too big or not big enough for your tractor, or if your tractor will, will perform well with that implement. It's, it's, uh, nobody can answer that. We can make a, a good prediction based on these 10 things I'm going to give you today, but there's no guarantee in this world. And most of the time, it's, it's uh, somebody that's found an implement on Craigslist or, or, or maybe they're buying new and they're just wanting to know, does, does this go together? The dealer tells me it, it's, it'll go together, but they're trying to sell it to me. So I, I want to get a second opinion here, and I'm always glad to do that. So first today, let's talk about uh, the two letters I got. Uh, first was from Pat. And Pat has a 3046R John Deere, and he's wanting to upgrade flail mowers, and he's wanting to move up to a 390 flail mower. He's found one on Craigslist. I don't know anything about flail mowers. We don't sell them in this area at all. I've never sold a flail mower. Uh, I know the people that have them love them, but these these 10 things all apply to flail mowers. And then Michael has a Hinamoto E2004 tractor, and he wants to know will it lift a thousand pound bale. And those are, those are the kind of questions I get, and I'm glad to answer those and, and try to guide people in the right direction. But I thought I'd put some of the things I thought uh, to these viewers uh, that I'd replied to them about and, and, and given them guidance on how to make a good decision on whether this will work or not, and just put this in a video. So the first thing I want to talk about today is what does the implement actually call for? Just about every implement uh, has a rating on the size of tractor that is, is needed to pull it. Now if you're buying used that gets a little difficult but if you're if you're buying new you can usually go on the manufacturer's website and they'll say this six foot cutter requires a 32 horse tractor. Now bear in mind when you bought the tractor the salesman told you engine horsepower and there's parasitic loss between the engine and the PTO and so your engine may have a 40 horse engine and the PTO may only be 32 horse. And if it's a PTO driven implement, the PTO horse is the important number. So let's first off determine what does the implement say it needs to be pulled uh, as safely and without damage to the tractor. Well the bale spike, uh, we're, we're asking how big a bale can I lift from my tractor and that doesn't really apply. So uh, some other things to think about in that. But the first thing is, what, what does the manufacturer of the implement say the tractor needs to be in terms of PTO horsepower to, to pull it? That's number one. Number two, what am I going to be doing with that implement? What am, I, what am I going to be cutting? What am I going to be plowing? What am I going to be tilling? And there's, there's, this is where the big variation comes in. If I want to go back in this woods and cut down every tree under that size, I'm going to need a heavier cutter than if I'm going to go out in that pasture over there that I cut every year and just cut grass. Uh, cutters are generally rated on diameter of material they'll cut. There's uh, Just about every manufacturer makes a light cutter that will cut up to one inch material. For pastures that's great. Two inch material, little heavier stuff like the underbrush. Three, four, five, six. They'll, there's machines you can take back in here and just cut a, cut a trail and anything in front of it. They usually pull by a skid loader and it's a mulcher. They'll just eat down everything back here. So, so that's the second thing to ask yourself. What do I want to do? If it's a tiller, am I, am I tilling up garden that's been worked before or am I going out in the woods and, and doing a food plot, you know, uh, in rocky soil? And, and the horsepower requirements vary depending on what I'm trying to do. So that's the second thing you want to ask yourself. What am I trying to do with it? Third thing you want to ask yourself, and this is really, really important for most of us that are what I call weekend farmers, guys that don't farm for a living. You know, the farmers have the good flat ground, the tillable ground, 
and we have hills, we have slopes, so so a lot of us are up on a hill. We've got a great view, but you know, getting a tractor around there is a little difficult. If I'm pulling a brush hog on flat ground, I can pull a bigger brush hog than if I'm going up and down really steep hills. So the next thing we want to ask yourself, what kind of slope am I going on? And if the manufacturer says you need 30 a horse to pull a six foot cutter, uh, that's probably on level ground. That's probably where they tested it. If you're going up and down the hills, add a little bit to that horsepower requirement. Maybe two to five to seven horsepower. You have a little cushion built in. So third thing, what kind of slope am I going on? The fourth thing to ask yourself is will I pull this on uneven ground? Or will I pull it in tight spaces? Uh, the ground you're going on and the spaces you're going in is really important. If I'm wanting to take, uh, uh, make trails through this woods back here, uh, an eight foot cutter may sound good, but there's a lot of places an eight foot cutter wouldn't fit. So I'd have to take a chainsaw and cut down some bigger trees. So uh, we, we traded when I was a kid, a six foot cutter for an eight foot cutter and our, our days of going back in the woods and cutting trails are over. And we wish we had kept the six foot cutter uh, to do the trails with. The other thing, if you're buying a finished more or, or a, a rotary cutter, brush hog, bush hog, whatever you want to call it, how, how, how uneven is my ground? Because if it's ground that's been bulldozed, you may be plowing in certain areas with your, your brush hog blades uh, and, 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 uh, and, and other areas and, and be fine on flat ground, but when you get in holes and everything, am I going to dig in if that cutter is wide? Uh, in this area where I live, southwest Missouri, is pretty uneven ground. And uh, we have trouble selling zero turns with 72 inch decks because there's just not that much level ground. You find yourself cutting the top off of dirt if you have a 72 inch cutter. Most places a, a, a 60 will be fine, but some places you need even narrower. So factor in, am I on uneven ground? Number five is how fast do I want to go? Or how fast do I want to get done? Let's say I've got a six foot cutter that's just marginal for my tractor. Uh, if I'm not in a hurry to get done, and I'm okay with cutting just five foot of that, uh, that doesn't take as much horsepower. In other words, I'll, I'll overlap a little bit. Now, I'm not gonna get done as fast. I'm not gonna get the full capacity of the cutter, but, but I can still pull it with a smaller tractor. Maybe it's a tiller. Maybe you've got a wide tiller, and, and maybe you don't wanna till the full width of the tiller. Maybe you want part of the tiller and the till ground you've already been over. So, so you, if you're okay with not getting done as quickly, you can, you can do a little overlap and still get by with the cutter. And, and you'd do that if you found a bargain on Craigslist and, and it was marginal for your tractor. Number six, and this is something you don't always look at, but look at the lift capacity of the tractor. Uh, if you go to tractordata.com on most tractors, now the uh, Hinamoto we couldn't find it on, but on most tractors they're gonna tell you the lift capacity of that tractor, uh, both on the three point and on the loader. And, and so if you're putting a front attachment on or a rear attachment, you need to know what your lift capacity is and will that jive with the implement. Now on a flail mower, you can get in kind of trouble. Flail mowers, mowers have a lot of metal in them. They're heavy and you could get a 1800 pound flail mower on a tractor with 1800 pounds of lift capacity and you could be in trouble real quick and not have enough power. So lift capacity of the tractor is the next thing to look at. Number seven, we need to look at our tractor and how is it equipped and how old is it? If you're brush hogging and you're going to buy a brush hog that's almost over the recommended size for the tractor and you have hydrostatic drive, that could be a problem. Brush hogging and, and hydrostats don't really go well together. Hydros don't like heat and it's hot when you brush hog usually and, and uh, they'll build a lot of heat in there. Uh, also, what is the age of my tractor? Uh, is it an older tractor? Tractors lose horsepower as they get older. So if you have a, an older tractor that's not had a rebuilt engine, it may be rated at 40 horse, it may only be putting out 25. So you don't, you don't really know that, but if it's an older tractor, I'd factor in, uh, uh, especially if it's got some wear on it and a lot of hours, it's probably not putting out the horsepower it's rated for. Number eight, what are your maintenance skills? If I'm gonna run a implement on the back of my tractor that is just at the maximum range that tractor can handle, I wanna maintain everything meticulously. I wanna grease everything at the recommended intervals. I wanna check and change oil when I, at the recommended intervals. You wanna have an owner's manual for both the tractor and the implement, and you wanna follow the maintenance schedule to a T. 
I've seen a lot of people that don't follow maintenance and, and stuff wears out quicker. But if you follow the, the maintenance and maybe if you're if you're on the bubble of, of having too big an implement for the tractor, maybe you, you go overboard, change the oil a little more often, grease a little more often. You can't you can't over maintain a tractor. So uh, maintenance is extremely important if you're on that bubble where that implement is almost too big for the tractor. Number nine, what is my willingness to pay for repairs? As I mentioned earlier, hydrostatic drive tractors are really not the best for brush hogging and I own a hydrostat I brush hog hills in hot weather with my hydro on my on my little tractor and I'm gonna have a failure someday I'm gonna have to replace that hydrostatic transmission I know that I accept that I'm willing to pay for that to have the convenience of hydro so the other thing you want to ask yourself uh, yeah, maybe that implement is just at the bubble of, of how much the tractor can pull, and if I put that on there, uh, there's, there's no Santa Claus. It's going to wear the tractor uh, uh, faster. So am I willing to pay for a few repairs in order to have that implement that's a little bit bigger than is, is recommended? And that's, that's up to you. And finally today, number 10, the last factor in this whole equation is you. And most of the time, if someone is asking me, will I tear up my tractor doing this? My answer uh, that I want to give is no, because obviously you care about your tractor and, and you're trying to make it last a long time. You probably maintain it really well. Most of the people that watch my channel are trying to get educated about tractors and they take really good care of their stuff and they maintain it at recommended levels. The people that really get in trouble and tear stuff up when you put a marginal implement on a tractor are the people that think when they bought that tractor they bought an army tank. You can tear a tractor up, you can tear a cutter up, you can tear a lot of stuff up if you don't maintain it and you just run it at wide open all the time. And there's no way around that. Most of the time if you're asking me on my on my channel can I operate this product with this tractor? The answer is yes because you care. And, and you're going to try to take care of it. And, and that is the, probably the biggest piece of the puzzle is the operator, the guy sitting on the, or lady sitting on the tractor seat. And if you, if you care to maintain it and take care of it, you're going to be fine. Now, I can't, I can't guarantee you, you want to have a catastrophic failure at some point, but if you care that much that you're asking, you're probably just fine. To close today, what happened to Pat and Michael? Well, Pat decided to pass on the 390 flail more. He found out it had been used commercially, and I usually don't like buying used stuff that it's been in a commercial operation and we, we kind of arrived at that decision together but he passed on that uh, but I think he would have been all right uh, he, he did a lot of research on that uh, and the other thing is Michael can I pick up uh, the 800 to a thousand pound bale with my Hinamoto well Michael was getting ready to order a bale spike online and I told him to go to his local farm supply store and find the cheapest one he can and, and ask him if he can do a demo and just run it out there and try to pick up a bale with that little tractor and see if it will I I don't know there's no way of knowing he's got front weights on it uh, he was mentioning a, a BX 24 Kubota he'd seen it done it uh, will his tractor do it uh, you know I don't know you know a lot of that stuff is really tough to predict until you actually get it out there so if you can get a bale spike from a farm supply store and take it out to the farm and try it uh, and then tell them I'm just going to uh, I'm going to spike one bale and if the tractor front end comes up off the ground it won't pick it up at all I'm going to bring it back most most farm supply stores would work with you on that and then clean it up good and take it back to them if it doesn't work and I think you'll find out real quick and I I don't have a clue my gut tells me it won't pick it up but some of these tractors will do way more than you think they will you just never know here's a video I did about sizing a brush hog to a tractor that you might want to watch if you're buying a brush hog sometime if you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel I'd be honored. Click the mic face icon and check the bell so you're notified when I post future videos. And if you'd like gift ideas for the tractor owner, go to my website right here. Thanks for watching.